Today, I'm flying the new upper class suites on board Virgin Atlantic's stunning Airbus A350. Let's experience their world renowned private wing at London Heathrow, named simply the Clubhouse. After being whisked through a private security channel, you enter one of the world's best lounges, featuring a la carte dining, bottomless champagne, cabanas, and even a peloton. I'd just like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Oh, and we're not even at the main event. Next, we'll head to the private upper suite, complete with fine dining, champagne, a bed, oh, and a private onboard lounge called The Loft. What makes this trip so special is it's one of the very first flights back to the US, which British citizens can take. In fact, it's been close to two years since anyone in the UK, and the EU for that matter, have been able to fly directly to the States without special exemption. So back to the Scarlet Lady. In case you don't know, Virgin Atlantic is a British airline which has been flying largely transatlantic operations since 1984, starting with a sole Boeing 747. With Richard Branson at the helm for many years, it's pioneered a cheeky yet premium British experience, even in coach. Right up until the pandemic, they were flying a fleet of 747s, but since have downsized to remain in operation. Most of their fleet is made up of Boeing 787s, with a handful of A330s and the newly introduced Airbus A350. That's where I come in. I want to find out if this could be the very best way to fly across the Atlantic. Without any more to say, let's head to the private wing at London Heathrow, where I've already been getting into some trouble. Hey guys, what is up? And welcome back to the channel. You join me in a funny situation, where I'm, <laughs> I'm attempting to get into the Virgin Upper Wing, but I've been dropped off in a really bizarre place. This is the entrance. So, let's see what it is like. Oh, there we go. It's a bit easier than the UK passenger locator form, isn't it? <laughs> right guys, all checked in for my flight. Now, the unique thing about the Virgin Clubhouse is that you get your own special wing going through security. Let's just uh, head through now. So as you see, you completely avoid any of the other queues and the hustle and bustle of the rest of the airport. Anyway, catch you guys in just a second. Right then, all through security. Now we've got to head through duty free. Uh, you obviously have that special wing going through into the main terminal, but now I've got to go and walk over to basically the clubhouse, the Virgin Clubhouse, which I w is widely regarded as one of the very best lounges at London Heathrow, probably on par with the Qatar Airways one in T4, but that's unfortunately closed. So to be honest with you, probably one of the very best options at London Heathrow. Obviously there's a few other lounges. There's the Qantas one, got the cafe one, which I don't believe is open yet, but we are interested in the clubhouse. So here we go, Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse. Let's do it. Of course, there's a uh, seat in the lift. Don't mind if I do. That's very bizarre, isn't it? And look at this, this is fabulous. Right, let me get my passport stuff out and uh, let's go and head into the lounge. Well, this is lovely. It's actually a lot less busy than I have been in here before. The infamous bar. Right, I think first things first, let's get some food. Oh, right, I found a lovely place secluded out of the way here, next to some kind of faux jungle. Um, <laughs> but anyway, let's, uh, let's order some food. Let's see what we've got on the menu. Hello, how are we? Oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, good, thank you, sir. Yeah, not yeah so bad. we've got the food menu there for you oh, and good. drinks. Can I get any drinks, champagne, or anything at all? A few moments later. I think you can tell I'm settling in pretty well. Um, cheers. It's really good to see that they are serving uh, Laurent Perrier uh, champagne. Uh, they used to serve uh, Lance and Black Label here. So this demonstrates a pretty good upgrade. I think on that basis, we need to uh, toast to, uh, to flights back to the US. Cheers. And I have ordered a, let me get this right, Shatsuka, one sec. I have ordered a Shack Shuka. Goodness me, I butchered that pronunciation, but let's, uh, let's tuck in. Right, with food out of the way, I thought I'd give you a little tour of this exclusive facility here at London Heathrow. Many of you might be familiar, it's been here for many years, but there are a few changes now that it's back open again. So let's take a look around. First up, 
and possibly the most iconic part of this entire uh, lounge is the uh, bar here. As you can see, take a seat at the bar or enjoy and indulge in plenty of Laurent Perrier. We're now on to the next bit, which is perhaps one of the most quirky features of the lounge, and this has only been introduced very recently, is they've got Pelotons. Now, I don't really understand why, why they have these, because do you really want to work out before a flight? But it's here, and what could you perhaps beat? That, that's got to be the best possible view, hasn't it? They've got these cute little uh, cabana areas here. And I think something that you have to remind yourself about this lounge is it's business class, it's not first. And it has that sort of special feel to it, something that British Airways just doesn't have. So now we're through into the, I guess, billiards chill out room. Loving that they've got all like the sort of various Virgin uh, parts of the business, of course, Virgin Galactic, that's super cool. A lot of people don't actually realize this at the very top here. Um, it's a pretty unique feature. Not many lounges have outside space in airports, so let's come through here and check out what they call the garden. Wow. Now this is unique. Jet fuel ahoy. Yep, it's very strong. But wow, I love this. There are a lot of places around Heathrow to spot planes, but <laughs> this is seriously cool. I, I could stay up here and miss my flight, but I, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> so let's head back downstairs. Right, I think it's coming to the end of my time here in the lounge. Uh, it says go to gate, um, as we know. You never know, depending on the airline, how overzealous they are with their timing. So with that said, let's head back, grab my stuff and go over to the gate to go and see the A350 in the flash can't wait i have flown this before quite some time ago way before the pandemic so it's going to be interesting to see what they've done on their resumption of service over to the us And just before we get on board, here's a quick word from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace make it super easy for you to set up and host a website. This isn't the 1990s where you have to know complicated coding. Squarespace really have this down, handling it all from the domain name through to the design, hosting, social media linking, and even your search engine optimization. The best bit is Squarespace are offering you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just head over to Squarespace Squarespace.com forward slash Trek Trendy and use the coupon code Trek Trendy. Thanks again, Squarespace, for making this video possible. Atlanta 1455. Let me get that back on. Uh, not that I know of. So. Right, all document checks sorted. Now it's the waiting game. Imagine we've probably got to have a sort of 10 or 15 before boarding. Right, it's time to get down that jet bridge and onto the gorgeous A350. I'm warmly welcomed on board and directed to my seat. Come on, how beautiful is this cabin? It's more like walking into a high-end cocktail bar than a plane. What I do find funny is that Virgin love playing what seems like Kiss FM when you get on board. I guess it just adds to the quirkiness, but I do feel as if I'm getting ready for a night out. I realise that seat 1A, which I've chosen, is actually marginally bigger than the other seats in the cabin. You get more legroom and space to stretch out your legs. I'm promptly served a delicious glass of champagne. I didn't see the bottle, so I'm unsure if this is LP again. However, looking at the menu on board, it's most likely Champagne Ayala. Have I pronounced that right? After about 20 minutes on stand, the jet bridge retracts and the safety video screens. I actually really like the Virgin safety video. It may be a few years old now, but it's entertaining enough to grab the attention of even the most seasoned frequent flyer. In the upper class, seats are equipped with an additional shoulder harness. Okay, let's get that seatbelt on then. It's more like the kind of seatbelt you'll find in a car. I believe this avoids having to have a cumbersome airbag, something which is not very comfortable, especially when you sleep. As we push back from stand, I'm super happy to see Virgin have installed outside cameras, the tail cam being my favorite, of course. I really wish more airlines did this. 
After only a short taxi over to the runway, it's not long before we hurtle down it, off into the cloudy British winter afternoon, bound for Atlanta, USA. Flight time will roughly be nine and a half hours. Yeah, that's longer than I thought too. You might be wondering why I chose Atlanta, and it's because it seems to be one of the more reliable destinations which Virgin runs its A350. This is the issue with having such a great new product. The suite itself is actually only on the A350, and of course that's not on all of their routes. As we begin to level out, I'm asked what I'd like to drink, and I'm presented with a menu. Now, I'm a big fan of this and love the selection today. I'd say it's more modern, British, comfort food. Shortly thereafter, my drink arrives, along with some sour cream pretzels, which was so fab I had to ask for some more. After around 30 minutes, my table is set and starter presented to me. I'm thankful to see that Virgin provides metal cutlery and proper napkins, however it's a shame that this is all on one tray and not on a proper Qatar-esque tablecloth affair. I went for the smoked duck, which interestingly came with this orange marmalade, odd but worked wonderfully. These awesome salt and pepper shakers do make up for the lack of a tablecloth. How epic are these? It's time for the main event. I went for the braised pork cheek, which was delicious, super tender, juicy, and overall just great comfort food. I kind of wish there was more. Right, as dinner service is over, we need to change into something a little more comfortable. So therefore, let's head over to the loo to get changed and to do a loo review. The bathroom wasn't the cleanest if I'm honest, but I think that's just because half the cabin has just used it after meal service. So we'll let them off on this one. Virgin provides Ren amenities, which smell wonderful. Right, let's change into my PJs. They only have these in a larger size. They fitted with a baggy fit, rather than some fitted ones, which I never really get. Okay, let's head back to my seat. It's time to get this bed out and take a nap. Virgin provide a duvet, mattress topper, and soft pillow. So the seat fully reclines into a bed at the touch of a button. After my best efforts to make this look presentable, shall we try it for size? It's a little awkward getting in, but once settled, it's divine. That mattress topper really works wonders. But my favorite is the duvet, which is breathable, light, yet cozy. Not sure about you, but I'm off for a nap. A few hours later, I awake. Now I think we need to check out the virgin party piece, the loft. This is located at the very back of the upper class cabin. I didn't really see it get very busy, like the bar often does on the other Virgin configs. And you can even order afternoon tea there, if you fancy. Love it. As I return to my seat, we're actually nearing final approach into Atlanta. I'm so excited to finally be back in the USA. We land right on schedule, and after around 10 minutes of taxi, we're at our gate. Thanks so much for coming along on this one, guys. What do you think? For me, I really think this offers the very best business class option between the UK and the US. Other carriers don't quite have the same quirkiness and indeed personality which Virgin does. The overall cabin is very practical and it offers one of the most comfortable business class setups which I've tried in recent times. I'd also like to mention that the crew on board today's flight were phenomenal and among the best I've had in a long time. As always guys, let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll catch you all again next week. Thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Trek Trendy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.